from the subject, the window seat. The window seat. The window seat. Amen. If you like to fly or have gotten used to flying over a period of time, I trust some enjoy sitting in the window seat of the plane. And don't any window seat folks, come on, raise your hands. You in church? Yeah, my wife is definitely. I told her I'm going to talk about it today, so I ain't going to get in trouble. Sister, sister's still raising her hand. That's right. I love the window seat. <laughs> Everybody else's hand down. She's in mine. Still up. I'm a window seat. Amen. Hey. But the window seat of the plane allows you to relax. Say relax. A whole lot more uh, than the middle seat and sometimes the aisle seats. Yeah. But my wife loves the window seat. If I want to make her mad, don't book her a window seat. <laughs> no, no, it's not like that. It's not like, well, she said, yeah, it is. <laughs> well, I don't know it. Thank the Lord I don't always know it. Well, because what does it do? It enables her and anyone else who loves the window seat to look out the window while you're traveling, right? Yeah. Whereas the other seats have limited views. But these words, window seat, may remind someone, or rather for those who listen to R&B soul music, don't, don't feel condemned. But for those who do, some of you have already heard the song by Erica Badu. No, we don't know her. Yes, you do. Some of you know her. Well, we heard what the pastor said. Should be listening. I'm not knocking you. He wasn't either. But she had a song entitled Window Seat. Anybody remember that? I ain't looking nobody. I ain't looking nobody. I ain't looking nobody. I ain't looking nobody. Came out back in 2010. She released it window seat. Well, to me, it's a little bit of a sad song, but in her lyrics, Erica was getting out her own message out to someone wanting that person to come after her. Amen. Uh, she was slipping into her own depression. And so she wrote out of the feelings of her own uh, tragedy in life her own depression. But as we read this text, God, uh, uh, we thank God as, as others, amen, went after Eutychus, who fell asleep on the windowsill and ultimately fell to his death. Now, I've heard many, as uh, we've taught the preachers, the preachers understand this, eisegete the text, which means they would insert their own ideas, their own biblical interpretation into something that God never intended for it to mean. And so many people come against Eutychus very harshly because he was a young person who fell to his death while in church. Are you following me today? Oh, I feel my help right now. The setting of scripture now is in 57 AD. 57 AD, as Paul is in both Macedonia and in Greece. Now we're, according to Dr. Luke, the pharmacist, not the street seller, y'all know who we're talking about, the herbal doctor, amen, who was the New Testament historian. We're just five years shy of the end of uh, Luke's chronicling or writing of the book of Acts. But Luke, he kept a log of, or diary of every day or each day's travels and activities. And so at the end of the book of Acts, it will be 62 A.D., 62 A.D., amen, which will be a total of 32 years since the birth of the church. Amen. The day of Pentecost, amen, which was 30 A.D., and so if you remember again, the book of Acts is the activities of the who? Apostles. All right, y'all got that. Amen. But Paul is what you would call a long-winded preacher. Okay, I ain't getting no help on that. <laughs> a long-winded preacher. That's what he was. But they did not have day services, uh, Sister, uh, Minister Gaines, because they worked during the day, the first day of the week. 
Amen. So they would come together at night and have what we call house church. House church. I remember as a child growing up, sometimes, uh, you know, throughout the week, if we didn't make it to Bible study, one of the saints sometimes would just come together and we just meet at that house and have a good fellowship, a song service and a testifying service and a, a Bible reading service and a, somebody may preach, somebody may sing a solo somebody may say something and guess what that is y'all that's church and who comes and dwells Jesus does because he said where two or more gather together in my name I'm in the midst you can have church in your car y'all ain't talking to me right now you can have church on the job when it's the right time <laughs> amen church should not just be confined or your worship experience should not just be confined to the four walls or eight walls or how many ever walls it is. Amen. Uh, so they will come together at night. So between four and five o'clock they will gather for worship service. Amen. Brother Jones, Paul preached from 5 p.m. all the way to midnight, man. Can you imagine that? Brother Hudson, no breaks, no fellowship, no greetings, no nothing. No bathroom breaks. You had to go, you had to go, but we still are preaching. We still have service. All y'all would have walked out if that was me. Do not bring that man back. <laughs> Amen. So Luke says in uh, verse 8 there, he says, there were many lamps in the upper room where they were all gathered together. This means they were gathered together in a home. Say a home. House church again, if you will. They were meeting upstairs. Say upstairs. Wealthy homes in this era uh, had what, well, many of us would call uh, not basements, but or attics. Amen. And so the lamps Luke's talking about are the candles, the candles that they were burning. Or some would say torches. Amen. Verse 9 says, and in the window a certain man, young man named Eutychus. I'm not going to ask you to pronounce his name. Who was sinking into a deep sleep. Say deep sleep. Deep sleep. Anybody ever had deep sleep? <laughs> yeah. He was overcome by sleep. And as Paul continued uh, speaking, he fell down from the third story or the third floor and was taken up dead. Listen to those last few words. He was taken up dead. When we go back and read this verse, we find him sitting, sitting. He's not on the front row. He's not in the choir stand. He's not in the pulpit. He's sitting in a window. Just imagine we have so much, so many people in here and, and a young man or a young woman is just sitting on the windowsill. That's what it was. Amen. He's not only sitting in a window, the next thing we find, he's slipping, slipping, slipping. Now look at this. Number one, he's sitting in a window. Number two, he's slipping. Number three, he's sleeping sleeping. Amen. When he's slipping now, he's trying to fight off sleep. Now he's sleeping, and then finally, he's sinking. And then, guess what else happens? He falls out of the window. I come to suggest today that all of Eutychus ain't dead. <laughs> Oh, God, I wish someone would catch that. Uh, look now, he fell in church. Are you following me? The name Eutychus means fortunate. Say that word with me. Say fortunate. Although his name means fortunate, he had an unfortunate experience in church. May I submit to you that just because you're in church, that doesn't mean that you can't fall. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, I feel my help right about now. Y'all talking back to me. Why? Because let's put some Bible on it. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, uh, so then uh, uh, for those of you who think they stand, take heed lest you fall. Be careful that you don't fall. So let's define this spiritually. Although some wouldn't think this can happen, 
But if we hang around the wrong type of folks in church, notice I say wrong folks, say wrong folks. They'll say stuff, they'll do stuff, they'll have you doing stuff you would never think you should do and say, oh, I ain't getting no amens on that. Where the church quiet? Where's my church mice at? <laughs> Amen. Uh, but some folks who ain't totally been delivered and set free from some stuff, they'll have you doing some stuff that's not of God. You'll have you, they'll have you going back into bad habits and being in the wrong places, all those kinds of things. If we hang around the wrong folks in church, I ain't saying in the world, in church, we can become whisperers. We can become gossipers. We can become alcoholics. We can become gamblers. We can become lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. 2 Timothy 3 verse 4. We can become liars. We can become backbiters. We can become dish diggers. We can develop a spirit of hate and disdain for folks in the church. Not this church, any church. Are you following me today? And the list goes on and on and on. And we can do all this if we hang around the wrong folks in church. We can fall from once being excited about going to church to making excuses for not going to church. Are you following me today? We can fall from being excited about greeting folks with excitement and love to standing back. Looking at folks sideways. Y'all know that side eye we give. <laughs> Somebody got to you. Somebody said something to you about this person and now you're looking at them a certain kind of way. Can't hang around the wrong folk. We can fall from having a love and a compassion for folks and now we've fallen into a judgmental spirit. Mm-hmm. We can fall from seeing the best in people regardless of their present situations in life. God, God just reminded me just so quickly, don't judge a person based on a temporary situation they're in. Their situation may change overnight, but we put them in a category that they may not always be in. Don't judge them and keep them there just because somebody else have a problem with them. Don't you chime in on that. Okay, I guess I got six witnesses on that one. So the question comes, how did Eutychus fall? Brother White, how did he fall, man? He was a follower of Christ. Brother Hawkins, amen, meaning he was a Christian. Eutychus had one of the most anointed teachers among him. He had Paul, amen. Eutychus was associated with other like-minded believers, so how could he fall? How could he fall? If I can, I want to give you a few proposals of how he fell. Maybe it was the lateness of the hour. He started preaching around 4 or 5 o'clock, right? And Brother John is after midnight. I know a lot of us would already be asleep. Talk to me, somebody. Just beg, I know some of you, I'm getting in that bed, I ain't trying to hear you. <laughs> Sister Lily, I, I know you said I ain't trying to hear them, get them on about of here. Sister Cleo, you to all y'all, mother, all y'all, uh-uh. It's time to go, preacher. Okay, okay, let's put another smile on your face. You know you're in church when folks, okay, when folks do this, that means they're going to be gone for a few minutes, right? <laughs> If they do this, that means they're going to be gone about 10 minutes. If they do this, they ain't coming back. They gone. You know it's the truth. <laughs> That's how you know you've been in the church. <laughs> Amen. Maybe it was the stuffiness in the room because it was hot. He was sitting in the window, right? He's getting some cool air, perhaps. Maybe it was the length of the sermon. Don't know. Yeah, I trust that. Maybe it was the dullness of the worship experience. Mm. Maybe he was bored. We don't know which one it was, my God. All we know is that he fell asleep. I've given you my five but I want you to participate 
I want you to talk to each other for a moment. I do. Some of you don't, so you come to church. I ain't come to talk. Yeah, come just talk to them. <laughs> Amen. Some folks get mad. I don't even want to sit to you. I don't even want to even sit beside. Just talk to them. Be nice. <laughs> For the next 10 seconds, I want you to talk to somebody. Just engage with them and, and create your own reasons why you think this young man fell out the window. Go, go ahead and talk. 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 Yeah. Why do you think he fell out of the window? There's a reason he fell out of that window. Yeah, it's a reason. It's a reason. There's a lesson God is saying in this. All right, all right, praise God. But I trust and believe that uh, most pastors, ministers, as we call it, the fivefold ministry gifts, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, when they teach this text, are too hard on Eutychus. They're too hard on Eutychus. Eutychus was a young man. Say young man. Amen. Yeah. He was a young person. He was a young adult, somewhere around 14 and 25 years old. Yes. Ministry gifts to include the fivefold. And many, many pastors, teachers, ministers spend way too much time, Sister Hawkins. Amen. Spend way too much time down in this young man. Talking bad about him, dogging him out. He's in church. He shouldn't have gone to sleep. He didn't fell asleep. Shame on him. So when them preachers all the way to that grave, that boy was wrong. <laughs> the lips poked out. <laughs> that boy no better than that. He ain't had no home training. See, they're, they're putting their own ideas in there, Brother Hawkins, Sister Sarah. They're putting their own ideas in there. That ain't what the scripture said. Elder didn't say that at all. No, no, no. Didn't say that. No, he fell asleep. Now, I ain't going to look at nobody if you fall asleep in church. I'll put up two hands for those who won't. Because I have two. Amen. But likewise, when it comes to our young people, we spend too much time talking about the color of the hair, the way they wear the hair, the kind of outfits they wear, the way their jeans are all cut up. Talk to me, somebody. Ain't nobody saying too much right about now. The makeup, the way they wear their makeup, the way they wear the dresses, the skirts, whatever they wear, the kind, the ways that the faces look. They got tattoos this way. They got, they got oh, oh my God, look at this. Oh, in my day, in my day. I've been guilty of this. But if you come to church after all you've been through, that's enough to give them kudos and credit for just coming to church. I thank God you came to church. I feel God on that. Thank God they're still coming to church. They don't have to come. Amen. So the same applies to you and me too. That after all we've been through this week, this past week, it's a blessing just to be in the house of the Lord. It's a blessing to be in church amongst the saints. It's refreshing. This is where we should draw strength from each other. Uh, the scripture says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as the man of some is. It's not just so you can hear the preach word, it's so that we can get strengthened too. You know, a smile uh, goes a long way before you even touch my hand, before you give me an embrace of a hug. That's a ministry in itself. You know, our pastor teaches us, you don't want to put mean ushers on the door. One of our pastors in our fellowship uh, churches was trying to figure out why his church couldn't grow. What was going on? He didn't know. He was doing, every, had everything right, doing everything. He and his wife were struggling, and they couldn't hardly keep nobody. They had one of the mean old ushers. Seriously? It's a true story. True story, Sister Jones. Had a mean usher. Amen. Say, no, you don't want to come to this church. You don't want to come to this church. Said all kind of stuff. Then the pastor got a hold of that person and asked him to leave. Then all those folks, different folks start coming. 
Ain't that something? Fool for thought, isn't it? Y'all ain't mean, don't y'all? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. But we have pastored some folks. I've had to ask, I think you may want to do something else. Because ushering is not your ministry. <laughs> you too hard handed. Go sit down over there. Find a seat and sit down. I don't know, just find some place. <laughs> No, you don't want that. But likewise, we get on our young people about the stuff that's not right in their lives. But we don't spend too much time praising them. Maybe you do. I have not always with my five. I have not. I would say, well, wait a minute. Why would you do that when this was set up for you? Why would you make that decision when this was this way for you? Well, well you know what? They have to make mistakes too, just like we did. Amen. 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 And we can't always even live our lives through them. That's not what we're called to do as parents. Oh, okay, I got six amens on that. I got the faithful six. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 10, verse 10, verse 10. Look at this. But Paul went down, fell on him, embracing him, said, don't trouble yourselves. He's all right. He's all right. Life is in him. You feel that, Dick, don't you? Don't worry. Don't worry. He's alive. He's alive. But Paul, what he did for our note takers, those of you who like to take notes, he reenacted, he reenacted 1 Kings 17, 21 through 23. He reenacted what the prophet did on the boy who died in that scripture, 1 Kings 17, 21 through 23. The Holy Spirit led Paul to do this. Paul stretched himself out over the boy's body. That's what he did. He's alive. That's what he said. Verse 11. We're moving hurriedly. I'll be through in just a few minutes. Now when he had come up, verse 11, they had broken bread and eaten and talked all a long while. They didn't even have communion yet. Y'all would be mad with me. It's first Sunday and I'm doing all this talking. Some of y'all probably like, no, dog, man, eat long hungry man what no but this was hours eight at least eight to nine hours but they went upstairs they had had communion but Paul did all this preaching they didn't have communion Paul did all this and spoke to them until the morning now can you imagine that somebody said no I'm gonna fall asleep on you <laughs> But I guess you can tell he really didn't want to leave these people. No, he didn't want to leave them. He loved being around them. You ever, you, you, you ever been around folks? You just enjoy being around. You don't want to leave. You wait till the very last minute to leave. That's the same instance here. But Paul, listen to this now. Listen to this. Paul doesn't take credit for putting his brother to sleep. He don't take no credit for that. I was hoping somebody would get that. I didn't want that, you know, go over your head. You, you, you're on the way home at that last light. When that stops. Oh, I got it. Hey, thank you. Oh. <laughs> no, he didn't take credit. But as I have a few minutes left, a few minutes, a few minutes left, I want you to leave here not thinking what put Eutychus to sleep, but I want you to uh, leave understanding how he was resurrected. <laughs> I want you to understand how he was resurrected. That's what's most important about this lesson. God wants us to get this spiritual revelation to the young folks, the middle-aged folks, the old folks, and those uh, who are new in the Lord. Amen. God can re or, or resurrect you. Amen. You can be resurrected. Before I close this, as I begin to close this, let me give you three ways quickly how to resurrect young folks and those who are young in the Lord who have fallen. Look at this. Man, through affiliation. Through affiliation. 
Paul went to where Eutychus was. We've got to be willing to put down how much we know about God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, our experiences, our life, you know, lessons, all that. They don't, no, no, no. That's no time for that all the time. One thing many of us are not good at is, asso is associating ourselves with those who've fallen, with those who've made mistakes in life. We're not good with that. Maybe you are, I'm not. When church people, especially when pastors fall, because y'all know, know a whole lot of them who have throughout your life, your, 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 your lifetime. When preachers fall, when ministers fall, when ministers of music fall, when church leaders fall, we have a way of pulling ourselves all the way back from them because we don't want to be known to be around them. But the nerve of us to not associate ourselves with somebody who's fallen because guess what? We ain't been on top of our lives all the time. We've all made mistakes. We've all made a bad judgment calls in life. But if it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't for the healing power of God, the delivering power of God, if it wasn't for the love of God, he would not have resurrected us. We haven't always had it together. No, we haven't. We haven't always shot straight. No, we haven't. We haven't always gotten it right. We've missed a mark too in our lives. We've made terrible mistakes in our life. Another verse of the Bible says that Paul, a, a version of the Bible says that Paul stretched himself on top of Eutychus. Mm-hmm. God has just the right Paul or the, just the right Pauline, hallelujah, to run down and stretch themselves on top of you when you've fallen, when you've fallen from grace, when you've fallen on that job, when you've fallen in your family, when you've fallen from, from not even wanting to serve God. God has just the right person to stretch themselves out on top of you and to help you to come back alive again in the things of God. They can stretch their strength into you. They can stretch their wisdom into you. They can stretch their love into you. They can stretch their compassion into you. They can stretch their understanding for you. They can stretch their care, compassion, and concern for you. They can stretch even their bad experiences just to help you come back alive. The window seat, the window seat. They can stretch budgeting and finance for those who have issues in that area. Wherever it might be, the nerve of us to pass by folks who've fallen. Yeah. Folks need help. You needed help. Yeah. Psalm 40 verse 2 says, He lifted me up from the horrible pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a what? Say, yeah. what? What's the scripture say? Whoa. He sets your feet on a rock. That means a firm foundation. He sets your feet on something that ain't going to slip. You know, it ain't quicksand. Ain't nothing about Jesus' faith. There ain't no sub-Messiah, y'all. No, no, no. I'm going to set you on the firm foundation. And he established my steps. In other words, he gave you a new direction. Gave you a new lease on life. Put the right people in our lives to help us navigate to where we need to go next. When others said, it's all gone, it ain't going to happen, you might as well forget it. God said, no, I'm going to pull you out of your terrible situation. We've all been in some pitiful situations. <laughs> you like that? That only God can lift us out of. When people fall, we have to get off our high horse. We can't think we're so high and mighty that we've never made a mistake. We've all fallen. Thank God for his grace. Thank God we didn't stay there. Say amen. How I many you know in the scripture that Paul left ministry to do ministry? Okay, somebody didn't catch that. Did you, did you catch this? Did you catch this? No, 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 no. Brother Addy, Sister Addy, Paul left what he was doing to do ministry. 
Oh, God. He left holding the microphone if he had one. I don't think he did. He left the pulpit. I don't think there was one of those either in the house. It was too small. I trust it was. But no, he left talking to them to go down to help this young man. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Some of you don't see where this is going. I'm really trying to close this, preachers. I'm really trying to close this. I'm really trying to close this. I feel God in this. I feel God in this. But notice now, this person fell from inside of the church to the outside of the church. In other words, they fell out the church. <laughs> Well, you, you, sweetheart, you got the revelation on that. Yeah. They didn't fall just this down in the church. They fell out the church. Yeah, 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 yeah. Number two, look at this. Look at this. Another way is through affection. Say affection. That's another way to help folks, y'all. Paul, look what he did. He touched him. He touched him. He touched him. Someone's afraid to touch folks. Someone's staying off as y'all. Someone's stuck up. Can't touch you. Don't, don't you look at me. Got no wrinkled, ugly looking face. Like something stinking in the room. Come on, y'all. Face all contorted. Ah. No, I don't want to touch you either. I don't want to hug you either. I don't want to be around you. Are you getting this word today? But he touched him. And guess what it says? It says he put his arms around him. In other words, he wasn't afraid to get out there on the streets and, and, and witness to somebody who's way deep down in sin and really messed up. They got throw up all on them, y'all. They smell like mess, y'all. No, no, no. They ain't just saying, we're praying them in the church. Lord, bring them in the church. Bring them in the church. No. Jesus said, go. We so scared. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Ah, God. And that's why you can't win nobody to Christ because you're so scared. Oh, there ain't nobody helping me right now. I'm trying to close this. If we don't touch our young folks, those young folks will be touched by somebody else. Somebody else will touch them. I'm a living witness of that. Oh, yeah. Not me, I'm talking about mine, ours. Amen. Amen. The older they get, the less affection many of them want or need from us. <laughs> we go to drop them off at school. No, 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 just drop me off over here on the corner. You go kiss a daughter. Uh 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 uh, not in front of my uh uh. Oh, so that's your little boyfriend over there. Let me see. No, then go. <laughs> Oh, Mom, I want to see you. We've experienced that. We've experienced that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny. No, I'm going to drive up. No, you know. Please put me out right now. Justine did that to me. <laughs> she said, put me out right now. <laughs> Had me crack it up. I want to know who it is. Amen. Everybody needs a hug sometime. Everybody needs to feel your warmth sometime. Somebody needs to feel validated sometime. Everybody needs an embrace sometimes. Last point, look at this. Through a affirmation. 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 Paul said, don't worry. He's alive now. He's alive. He's alive. Paul isn't saying that Eutychus wasn't dead. No, he didn't say that at all. He's saying he's been resurrected. What resurrected him? The affiliation. The affection. And now, on top of that, he's getting some affirmation. After he got up, Paul said something good about Eutychus. He said, he's alive now. Some of y'all, when our kids and when young folks and young people in the Lord, they could be older but still a baby in Christ. When they come to their senses, y'all, say something good about them. Validate them. Approve them. Love them back to where God wants them to be. Don't let them stay where they were. God wants us to get to the point that we affirm people in the presence of other folks. Talking good about them. Are you catching a revelation? Could God be saying it ain't time to leave church yet? 
everybody ain't happy yet. It ain't time to leave because ain't nobody here yet. It ain't time to leave yet because somebody is still hurting. It ain't time to leave yet. Not everybody's smiling yet. I don't care what's going on in your life. The joy of the Lord is your strength. No matter what you go through, who says this, who does that, who's plotting against you, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Nehemiah 8.10 It's your strength when you can't sleep at night. It's your strength when you can't eat like you want to. It's your strength when you're being persecuted on the job, persecuted in the church, persecuted in the neighborhood, persecuted in your family, persecuted in your marriage. The joy of the Lord will strengthen you. He'll cause you to get through it when nothing else. Not the joy the world gives. Jesus said, not the joy that the world gives. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. God will give you joy that the world can't give you. And the world can't take that joy away from you either. Say amen if you can. Mm -hmm. I feel God up in here right now. If I was a hollering, squalling preacher, I would have said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, my, 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 my God. But that ain't my calling. That ain't my calling. I know how to stay in my lane and and do what God told me to do. Uh, Everybody ain't free yet. It ain't time to leave church. Everybody's not totally free of their depression and free of their despair and free of ready to give up and all this stuff. No, 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 God. I came to have church. Say amen if you can. Could God be saying it ain't time to leave until everybody's resurrected? Could God be saying it ain't time to leave because everybody ain't resurrected in their attitudes, areas of encouragement, with positivity, different perspective on life. Eutychus was sitting there and he fell out the window. You want to know what else I noticed in this text? He was sitting there and nobody said anything to him. Nobody said one word to you because sometimes we see the young and those young in the Lord about to fall by the wayside and they about to do something wrong we just allow them to fall we don't say nothing to them you catch the revelation we see the young folks cuss the coaches out cuss the teachers out slap the parents steal stuff hurt them we so afraid of them we don't say anything then we later hear that they ain't coming back to church, they ain't going to Bible study, wind up dead somewhere. I knew she was a bad kid. I knew he was a bad kid. And, you, and, and God gave you something to say to him and you didn't say anything. You could have helped that person. I ain't saying this so you feel guilty, but y'all, we too critical in the church. It's a it's shame on us. Shame on us. All this God, all this Bible, we, all this Bible reading we've been doing, scripture quoting and, and all this stuff, every song we know in the hymnal, and, and, and you can't help somebody by saying hello, listening to them, seeing someone go down the wrong path. You know what? How you doing? Well, why are you down and out? You don't have to be a psychologist. You don't have to be all deep. Young man, young woman, What's going on? A listening ear help folks. It'll keep them from blowing their brains out. We so busy judging folks and criticizing. Folk, we, then we wonder why folk leave the church. Some folk leave on their own. We get that. You know, I'm a pastor, so guess what? Some folk got pray away. No, you don't deal with this burden. I do. I do. Because some folks, I don't want here. If they ain't going to do you right, and God knows you're going to sit there by my spirit, I don't want you here. I want folk who want to be blessed, encouraged, who want to feel the more of God. I'm going to pray them away. I sure will. But some folks, they just leave the church because they don't feel no love. They don't feel no compassion. They don't feel it. They feel criticism for how they look, for how they dress, you know, for, for, you know, for, for, you know, even their language, how they talk. We later hear somebody didn't shot him. Oh my God, I can't believe 
uh, young man X is gone. Young lady X is gone. I just saw them uh, three, four days ago. I just saw them and they were just having a terrible time. That was your golden opportunity, child of God, to help them. You may not have known, and God's not holding that against you. But, 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 but don't be surprised. Now you've heard the word, the opportunity will present itself. You're going to see it. It's going to happen. You, you know, God doesn't test us. That's wrong. No, no. The Bible says that God doesn't tempt us. James says that. Neither he doesn't tempt mankind. He allows you to go through tests. He don't tempt us. God, the God's not unrighteous like that. That's wrong teaching, wrong theology, stuff we've been hearing for years that ain't even biblical, that ain't even scriptural. No, 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 no. God will allow you to see something going on where, where you'll be positioned and equipped to intervene. Yeah, to be a conduit of hope, a conduit of strength to help somebody young in the Lord. Somebody may have fallen from grace years ago and now they're just coming back to church. Embrace them with love. Embrace them. Help them. But when they saw him in the window, they didn't say anything. There's some Eutychuses that appear in our own lives. We see them in the window and we don't say to them, you're too close to the world. Get out that window. You about to fall, young man. You about to fall, young lady. It's hard to confront the young and the Lord and young folks if you're scared of them. You're scared to intervene. God will, God will relinquish. He'll pull that fear out of you. Last verse. They brought the man, the young man alive, and they were greatly comforted, meaning they rejoiced. They were happy. God wants you and I to recognize that one Eutychus in your life who needs some help. That one person who fell out the window. Are you catching this today? Be willing to help them with all that's in you. Don't let them take advantage of you, but, but help them. Don't give them all the money. Pay the little bill for them. I know this is registry. Other believers look on in the scripture. Guess what? They were all comforted. They were all happy because he was resurrected. God's going to use you to resurrect somebody. He's going to use you to impart some strength into somebody. Not just praying. Prayer don't always do it, y'all. I hate to be the one to tell you. We in church, we spiritual, but prayer don't always do it. I ain't the type of person to say, just pray about it, God. No. You need to talk it out. If I can't help you, I'm going to send you somebody who can. Somebody who has wisdom in this area over here, wisdom over there. No, no. You don't have to say that way. The window C. The window C. God's going to send some Eutychuses in your life. Get ready. It's going to happen this year. Every single last one of you going to have a Eutychus this year. I pray this message helps you, equips you, gets you ready. You ain't got nothing to be scared of, but you're going to save somebody's life.